you never lose that excitement of being in and around the football club that you've supported for 45 years. Um, but you have to try and work on, concentrate on the work you've got to do. That's when you, that realisation where it's like taking photographs of a sport, football is fast paced and keeping up with it is really hard. Yeah. Yep, so Ian Randall, uh, QBR club photographer. Yeah, massive, massive fan. Um, support QPR. I remember my first game, 1977, Nottingham Forest. Sat in what is now the Stanley Bowl stand. Around our block. I remember being on that side with the home crowd. Um, I've got a feeling we lost, but a few months afterwards in the FA Cup, we played, QPR played our local non-league side, Wildstone. So we went to that as well. Uh, QPR won four 0 Stanley Bowl scored a goal, at least one. That sort of era. So uh, once you see that and the stadium and the crowd, and it was just you know you, you're set for life. You, you know when it's, it's in your blood from then. Uh, previously, I was a fire officer. Um, I I'd always had interest in photography, but having a career with shift work, long hours, and two young kids, I never had time to you know, progress it any further. But um, fortunately in uh, December 2010, I got diagnosed with a rare bone cancer, urine sarcoma in my ribs. Um, so I had a, a year of intense chemotherapy, surgery, more chemo, um, and then rehab for 18 months, two years after that. And when it was decided I couldn't go back to work, I was at a loss of what to do. So a friend of mine who used to be the fire brigade incident photographer, said you know you want to learn photography get a camera you can use some of my my equipment and my lenses and teach me a few bits and pieces and it it took off from there so that's where it started i remember the first football photos was with the qpr women um back in 2014 now and uh went down i thought i'll give it a go thinking can't be that hard uh and really surprised that it was so i got, got a good couple of photos um but also some really bad ones. So I knew there was a lot of room for improvement and uh, I had the time to do it and to learn it. So yeah, it's like eight years on and here we are. A couple of their goals to some of their players were really good. So it was hard then to, to keep up. And um, that's when you, that realization where it's like taking photographs of a sport, football is fast paced and keeping up with it is really hard, yeah. It's, it's amazing to be around training grounds. Um, the, the players are more aware of me being there now. I'm, I'm, I'm a, a regular face, I guess, so um, they react better, more natural with me. It makes for better photographs. Um, and certainly the youngsters, when I do their games, they know where the camera is. Their celebration shots are, like, are brilliant. Um, keep sort of saying to them, you know, too close, too close, and, but they get carried away in the moment. It's, uh, it's understandable, but yeah, it's really good, good fun. As youngsters, even as early as maybe when they're 16, um, perfect examples at the moment. You've got, you've got Sinclair Armstrong, Aaron Drew, Joe Gubbins coming through. Um, seen them since they were 15, 16. Um, Sinclair came in the under 18s, I think, but you know, to see them as little skinny little lads and now you know, they're young men, strong and knocking on the door, the first team. And you know, when you, you get that, especially with Sinclair at the moment, when him coming on, the buzz around the ground, and I think. Once he gets his first goal, I think the, the place is going to explode, and so he, yeah. So, yeah, it's good. When when the players want to use your photos, is you know, it makes it worth worthwhile, regardless of the score. Then, if uh, if they're using some of your pictures, it's sometimes it's as quick as when I get in my car after the game. Um, and obviously, it's an hour home, and then sift through a few. But uh, I do full edits the next day, so that's when I, I generally send most of them out. So it's great. The best photos for me in football are the celebration shots because that's what everybody remembers. Um, but to actually get that particular shot, um, you've got to have an understanding of the light and that's around the conditions. Um, you're constantly focusing on where you think, anticipate where the, the game is going to go. Seeing the training and seeing the first team, for example, you've got a really good idea of if it goes out to the left, if it's going to come inside to the middle or back across the back four. Um, so you can anticipate that. So you're tracking them all the time. But you've got the composition to think of uh, where the player is in the frame, if the ball's going to be in the frame or leaving the frame. 
um, and it's different conditions you've got this time of year it gets really cold and it's wet and horrible and you can't feel your fingers and it's when you're trying to send images off and caption them um, then you can't get wi-fi and it's yeah it can be really frustrating and you miss quite a lot of the game but it's um you know, just to just get the edits off, you feel satisfied once you've done the first couple of dozen, yeah. Well, God, I've taken tens of thousands. So I could probably narrow it down to a couple. Um, again, celebrations, Charlie Austin against Luton last year, because he ran over to my side at where I sit, our block when we kicked off the loft. So I've got some absolute crackers of that. Um, Linda Dykes this year, Reading, when he scored, he came that side. Um, Don Ball against Cardiff in lockdown when we wore the uh, the retro red and white. That was a that was a brilliant. He he ran around. He he must have run 100 yards and back down again. But a great group gathering, all jumping on top of him was really good. Um, and when QPR women when they finally won their cup final, um, great scenes. Uh, seen them lose about four or five semi-finals over the years. So to, to get to a final and win it on penalties was yeah it was brilliant so yeah great shots from that it's good like having having young Lenny recently um, come into a game with me it's uh, it's I think as he you never lose that excitement of being in and around the football club that you've supported for 45 years um, but you have to try and work on concentrate on the work you got to do and um, he, yeah, he was he was amazed at how difficult it all was and keeping up the play, sending images off, um, weather conditions and, and not to be too distracted by the crowds. I think pre-season shooting for the club at the Crystal Palace game, um, being the sole photographer for that for the club um, is a huge, was a huge step up and the pressure of getting what the media team want, like a beer ray coming off the coach and then the players on the pitch and certain warm-ups and certain players um, absolutely fantastic and the buzz from that for me I was I was really nervous going into it but afterwards it, it was just an amazing feeling um, probably as well on my 50th birthday I was shooting in training and the players were jogging around as the start of their warm-up and Jeff Cameron was the captain at the time uh, he came over and literally held up a shirt that had my name and 50 on it signed by all the players and they all huddled around and sung me happy birthday and that was that was when I then reverted back to being a 14 year old schoolboy. it was just like dinner to do myself it was amazing yeah absolutely brilliant yeah yeah love it absolutely love it it's um I, I couldn't think of anything you know I didn't think I'd have a chance at any kind of a, a career again um 18 years I did as, as a fire officer and and now I'm sort of eight into this and it's progressing well and just love it. Like every, every day it's, it's, it's just brilliant knowing that you're involved with the team that I've followed around the country for 45 years and it's, um, to see the players out there. You, you have a, a lot more respect for what they do and what the management team do on the training ground. And when you see it on the pitch, how they've trained and worked on it all week, yeah, it, it's brilliant. Yeah, love it. Who wouldn't? Obviously, Sarcoma UK, you mentioned them earlier. That's a, a charity very close to your heart, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, very small cancer charity. It's a very rare cancer. Um, so when I was learning photography, I, I rang them up and, and said, you know, I can't raise money for you. I can't run anymore and I can't do certain things, but I can, you know, push a button and take some photos. So um, I do all their events. Um, recently was at uh, up in up in London at Lord's Mayor where a function there I shoot uh, at the cheering point for the marathon um, so they had 80 odd runners at the marathon uh, the other month and um, there's all sorts I'm up in Parliament in January there's quiz nights there's tough mudders and and all that sort of thing and I go along when I can and and help them out it's, it helps with their the awareness for them is really important because as I said it's a very small charity um, doesn't get any government funding so every every penny helps you know I'm, I'm a survivor so I want to I want to give back and, and help them grow.